Now, thanks to the near impenetrable pecking order of motoring titles in Britain, we, as a new channel, are unlikely to get our hands on a Cayman GT4 RS anytime soon. But instead of sitting around sulking about it, we thought, why not get the next best thing, a GT4, and put it up against something it's never met before in its lifetime. You know, just to set the bar before we do get to meet the beast. The bright yellow Civic Type R limited edition you see here is Honda's take on the GT4 formula. With a 47 kilogram weight saving, thanks to the ditching of sound deadening, the infotainment system and aircon. The car also rides on firmer suspension and, significantly for our tests, its 320 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder engine powers forged wheels wrapped in ultra-sticky Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres. It's a front-drive hot hatch on steroids and then some. The Cayman GT4, on the other hand, is less garish, even in the shade of frozen berry, but it packs a naturally aspirated 4-litre flat-six engine with 420 horsepower, 100 more than the Civic. The front suspension is practically pinched straight from the more senior 911 GT3, and like the Honda, the wings and ducts of Porsche's GT4 all use airflow to press the car and its set of Cup 2 tyres into the ground. But on our twisty technical track, which is going to be faster? Let's start with a Porsche. Obviously, I was going to take the Cayman GT4 out first. Even though I drove this car here to the circuit, driving one of these machines on a sunny day, few things are more exciting and more enjoyable than that. The flat six engine in this car has been outstaged by the motor in the new GT4 RS. But in isolation here, it feels spectacular still. I mean, okay, you don't have that 9,000 RPM headline figure. There's something like 100 horsepower fewer as well. And 420 horsepower isn't anything to really shout and scream about these days, especially with the number of turbocharged cars out there offering silly, silly power. But yet, you get in this mid-engined, very emotive feeling sports car and straight away your senses and the sensations of this car are at maximum as is the agility we're on michelin pilot sport cup 2 rubber so it takes some warming up it feels like this is a racing car for the road it still feels that way now even knowing that that gt4 rs is the more authentic proper track day machine this porsche is unbelievable to drive the steering feel is there's so much of it it's just pouring with information my fingertips feel like they're having a constant conversation with the front axle i can feel when the rubber is starting to scrub and i can feel when the, the chassis when the car is loaded this corner here is a perfect demonstration that front left is properly loaded at speed and i can feel it through the steering wheel and you also just have so much information coming through the car itself. It's just, it just wraps itself around you. It's not a particularly big car, but yet it still manages to shrink around you and just feel like an extension of your torso. It does exactly what you want it to do when you want it to do, and it doesn't bite you in the arse, unless you're silly. There are moments, and we've had a few laps out earlier today when I've taken a few liberties and the back end has come around on me, but you're only ever a dab of throttle or corrected lock away from bringing it back into line. Ramp up the speed and you will, of course, find yourself having to be really accurate. And that's the best thing actually about this car. And I think having driven one of those Hondas before, what I suspect I'm gonna remember that limited edition Civic Type R is like as well, is how they, they really demand you to drive well. You can't just jump in one of these, just get going. Obviously you've got a manual gearbox and what a manual gearbox we have here, wow. You can't just get in one of these and just say, yeah, you know, I've never done this before, let's go quick. No, you have to build up. Firstly, the tires, then get to know the balance of the car. If you go into a corner in these Cayman GT4s and you're just off power, you're, you're off the brakes, you coast in, you'll actually get a bit of understeer. I've got it there because I came off the power and the front just starts to scrub because the car's so evenly footed from front to rear because that lovely flat six naturally aspirated engine is right over my shoulder. It means the weight isn't down on the nose. So if you come off the power, if you come off the brakes and the car just flattens out, the front sort of just glides into a corner and then you get what I'm trying to demonstrate here is a bit of push, but then you're only ever a big push of the throttle pedal away from bringing the balance back. It's just so neutral, so easy to work with. Oh man, I love this car so much. Even when it's trying to 
slide me off the road in a hairpin. <laughs> I went on the launch for this model actually. This is the second generation GT4, which you probably already know. And there are a few improvements here and there. The engine, from the outside at least, is slightly quieter because of the WLTP, the emissions filtering on the exhaust system. But you've got an extra 200cc for that engine, so it just has a bit more of a base, more feels more muscular. It is more muscular and it sounds more muscular and the experience just feels more serious as a result. I, I think the differences are especially pertinent on track. Carbon ceramic brakes on this car as well, which obviously push that starting price up. So it is now comfortably more than that Civic would cost, just under 40 grand that Civic. This now is over the 80K mark in this spec. I mean, with this lovely shade of frozen berry paint, of course, you're gonna spend a bit more, but the car you get is just, Sublime. Is it faster than the Civic though? Well, it has to be, surely. It's got 420 horsepower. Surely, surely, this Cup 2 Shod GT4 is going to be undefeatable today. It's going to be our fastest car that we've ever driven on the circuit, surely. Well, I thought that. And then I went out in the Civic just for some practice laps earlier, and the grip that thing has. Oh man, that engine, that engine, and those brakes, and that steering, and that throttle response. <laughs> it's just the full package. I think I've explained how much I adore this car. Let's jump into that Civic, shall we? Before we get into the yellow one, let me just draw your attention to how much hot metal we have on cinch.co.uk. Whether it's hot hatches, sports cars or even supercars, and much more, each can be delivered to your door in as little as 72 hours. Rapid. Just like this thing. Civic Type R limited edition time. Well, straight away. My god, this thing genuinely, genuinely feels more like a racing car than I thought. That Porsche feels like a proper, proper sports car. You're really low in the car. You sit a little higher in the Civic, but it feels so fidgety and so firm. I've stuck it right in race mode straight away, for obvious reasons, we're on the track. And you can see I'm being bounced around in the car. It doesn't even feel any slower. Like, put your foot down and you really get kicked in the backside. This Civic Type R doesn't have any more power in this limited edition form than the standard Civic Type R. I use the word standard in a way that says it's still a Civic Type R. This limited edition doesn't get a massive overhaul in the suspension department or the brakes, like, for example, that Cayman GT4 does. That Cayman GT4 basically has a GT3 front suspension. This is still very much like the normal car, just with slightly tuned, slightly tweaked damping, just a little bit firmer. Honda never actually officially said that it was much firmer, but you could just tell straight away you get in the car. There's no question about it. It's very, very stiff. It's very track oriented. You don't have to worry about this car being practical for the masses. It's just for the enthusiasts, the FK8 Honda Civic Type R nutters. Oh my God, that's bouncy. <laughs> this car still feels and has all of the character of that standard car and that's a really good thing. It means it's rapid. It means it's keen on turning. It means it's got a boost the engine. The engine really does pull beautifully from low revs, but you feel when that turbo hits you hard in the back. Totally different character to the Porsche, obviously. Porsche's delivery is smooth. It does build and build that Porsche, and it's got quite long gear ratios. This Honda has much, much shorter ratios to the extent you arrive in turn one in this car a gear higher than you do in the Porsche, even though the Porsche has 100 horsepower more. It flows so nicely, this car. If you can stop it from bouncing, the car flows really nicely. It means you can, you can let it start to rotate into a bend and then get on the power and maintain the momentum you have. The traction with that diff as well, the limited slip diff on the front axle is unbelievable. The way it puts the power down, these Cup 2 tyres, not identical to the ones on the GT4. Every car, even though they have the same tyre name, will have its own variation of that tyre but fundamentally as extreme as the tyre you get on the GT4. Wrapped around some forged wheels, which are lighter. Oh, and you don't get an infotainment system or aircon in here, which is why I'm probably looking a little bit shiny right now. But 
you do still bizarrely get a back bench for passengers, but I'm still not entirely sure why. I would have much preferred the aircon and then to have had that back bench removed, half roll cage or something like that would have been fun. But it doesn't need any more performance, honestly. <laughs> it's so fast. Brakes are mega too as well. So confidence inspiring. I'm arriving into a hairpin here. If you had a squidgy pedal, my God, that's a scary experience. But I don't know if the gearbox as well in this Civic might just be the better box. The, the box in that Porsche is fantastic. Both six speeds. But this Honda box is just so tight and so lovely to use. Well, they counterweighted it so that it felt more tactile, more engaging, and it does. It's such a joy to use. Oh, manual cars, man, I love them. Is this car gonna be as quick as that Cayman? As far as I'm concerned, I can't tell the difference in speed. Totally different driving style, of course. You go in on this, you get it rotated in, and then you get on the power and let the diff sort you out on the exit because that's front wheel drive fun and lunacy. Cayman is mid-engine and rear wheel drive. The balance is different. But yet, this seems to just get on with the job in the same kind of way. Slightly different instructions from the driver, but the result on track feels very, very much the same from where I'm sitting. 40 grand these cost when they were out. Obviously they're all sold out, the new ones are anyway. I'm sure you could pick up a used one somewhere, but 40 grand for this. Madness, that's basically half price versus that Cayman GT4. Oh man, I love both of these cars. Is this gonna be as quick? Let's find out, shall we? Is it gonna be able to get close? Okay, not exactly an unexpected result then, but it's epic to see just how close these two cars are on our little track, and how thrilling they are to drive on the limit. Had Porsche not just launched its even madder GT4 RS, and had Honda not just announced a new Civic Type R for 2023, I might have said that we're looking at two peaks of the current performance car world, but it seems we've more lap times to collect, including that of the mighty GT4 RS. What time do you reckon it'll set? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those videos.